All right, welcome. So in this video, I want to continue talking about collision detection, and we did a little bit of collision detection already with bounding circles and bounding boxes. And now I want to focus on, well, specifically line segments. And the reason is, if we want to extend beyond bounding circles or bounding boxes into more arbitrary shapes like arbitrary polygons, then we tend to end up relying a lot on doing collision detection between line segments and seeing if line segments collide with one another. So I'm just going to show you here the underlying math and geometry behind detecting to see if two line segments coincide. So to do this, I'm going to just pivot sort of as we do these calculations between two kinds of ways of denoting a line. Now typically in uh, the computational worlds that we'll be involved in, the line will be den denoted by two endpoints, uh, an X and a Y, and we'll have two of them. Uh, but in geometry, it's more common for us to state a line as an infinite line, in which case we state it sort of as we, I've got stated here, um, as an equation um, with a slope and a y-intercept. So we have y equals mx plus b, m being the slope, uh, and then b being the y-intercept. And so this formulation is going to be helpful for us when we want to try and find the intersection between two points because the goal we're actually going to do is try and find the intersection between these infinitely length uh, lines and then see if that intersection point happens to lie on the line segments that we are actually interested in. So given that we usually start with the line segments, that means the process we're going to follow is fairly straightforward. First, take those two line segments and convert them into infinite lines of this form, the mx plus b. Basically, that means finding the m and the b. Then, doing a little bit of algebra and math to figure out where the intersection of those two lines are, if it exists. And then going back to those two line segments and seeing, hey, is that line on the two line segments? So for each of the two line segments, we need to check, is this point on that line segment, meaning is it between the two endpoints? If it is, then we know those two line segments intersect. If it is not, then that means those two line segments don't intersect, even though they're infinite lines probably do, unless they're parallel. So we can sort of ask ourselves here, I'm just going to give us an example that we can work out, uh, maybe mostly to practice our geometry, uh, in case it's a bit rusty, uh, is to find a intersection between these two points. Now, one, one way, reason I've stated it this way is that this is how you might get it as a computer. If you were a computer or if you're trying to write the code for a method, all you're probably given are the endpoints of the line segments, which means for us, we don't get to bring, our, bring to bear our more powerful visual computer. Our brain is really powerful in terms of doing visual computation, that if I drew these lines, it's going to be immediately obvious whether and where they intersect. So for instance, let's take a look. When we draw them, visually our mind can pick out exactly where that intersection point is. And so I've actually labeled it here. We'd have to read it off ourselves, but it is at 0.57. And what we really want to do is take what we've done visually and see how we can do that computationally behind the scenes without having to visually represent this. Maybe, and, and I, as I'm going to show in a demo in a second, what we might want to really do is now that we have these two lines, we could draw these two lines easily using their endpoints. That's why we have their endpoints. That's how we would draw it. But say we want to do something to their intersection point, like draw a circle around it. That's what I'm going to do in my demo. So if I want to draw a circle around it, I need to know that that intersection point is 5, 7. How do I compute that given that I only know these four points? Though That's the information that I have. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you that here now, is we're going to take follow up these two steps. I'm going to start here with the first step, which is taking the line segments that we have here and converting them into equations for infinite lines here, a y equals an mx plus b. And let's just see how we're able to figure that out. Now here, this first calculation here, this, this fraction is what the slope, which we usually define to be the rise over the run. And so the rise over the run means taking the difference in the y coordinate is the rise, and the run is the difference in the x coordinate. So what I've done here is I've taken our two endpoints. This is a 10 and a 5, and I've done the, the 10 
and the 5 here to get the difference between these two y coordinates, which is the rise. Now you'll notice here I actually do 5 minus 10, and that's because this is actually going to be a negative rise. This one's sort of going down. But I'm also going to, on the bottom, do 7 minus 2, which is going to be my 7 minus my 2, and that's going to be my run, and that's going to compute my slope for me. And I'm doing the same thing for my other line here as well with its two endpoints. So by using the endpoints, we can compute the slope for our lines, and at least if we're not in one of the edge cases here, or vertical or horizontal cases where we might get something bizarre showing up here, as long as we're not in one of those cases, we'll get the slope of our line. Then, once we have the slope of our line, Let's do a quick computation on this one here. We can see this would be 5 minus 10 gives us minus 5. And then we've got 7 minus 2. That's going to be 5. This gives us minus 1 as our, as we can see here, as our slope. And now we can take one of our coordinates. So let's pick one of our points on this line. This one here is 2, uh, 10. And we can plug it in and see what we get. So if we put in 2, into the x, into our minus x here, we would get minus 2. But what we should be getting out is 10. y should be 10 in this case. So that's how we would calculate that we need to add on 12. Minus 2 plus 12 gives us 10. And therefore, the equation for our y must be minus x plus 12. So again, I've done that for my second line as well. It has a slope of 2. Uh, and it is going to have a y-intercept we can see down here, we can't actually see it, but it would be down here at minus three. So we're still just doing this by hand, algebraically, to see what we're going to have to do programmatically uh, when we want to write some code to do this as well. But the first thing we've done is some pretty automatic operations here where we just take the endpoints and maybe have to plug them in at some point and calculate what our values are, slope and y-intercept. We might also have to calculate the x-intercept, and I'll show you how we can do that as well when we get to the code. So the next thing we need to do is see where these two infinite lines are intersecting. And the way we do that is since these equations are y equals some function of x and another y equals some function of x, we're going to take the two y's and make them equal to each other by making these two functions equal to each other. So I'm going to take my minus x plus 12 and I'm going to make it equal to my 2x minus 3. And then I'm going to do a little bit of algebra, so nothing surprising here. Move the x over to the other side to get 3x. Uh, take the, the minus 3, plus it onto this side to get 15. Do a little bit of division, move them to the, each other side, we get x is equal to 5 here. This tells us that where our lines intersect is at x equals 5. Now that's not a full point, we also need to know the y-coordinate, so now we can just go and take either one of these functions and plug it in. Let's take this, this bottom one, that would give us 2 times 5 minus 3 is 7. It's telling us y equals 7. Let's double check. The other one should give us the same point because this is the point where they intersect. So putting in 5 here, minus 5 plus 12 is also 7. So 5 and 7 is going to be the y-coordinate. That's going to be the point of intersection. So again, that's what we calculated, or that's what we saw when we visually drew this early earlier, and now we can see how we can calculate this point exactly by doing a little bit of algebra. Finally, uh, there is the third part to the test. Now, the way we've drawn it, we can see that this actually is on the two line segments, but the way we normally do that is by testing one of the coordinates, and I usually default to x, to see is the x-coordinate between the two x-coordinates for our endpoints. So is it between the 2 and the 7, and is it between the 4 and the 6. So in order to show some code for us that, to calculate if a line intersects with another, but also where they intersect, I've created a little demo here uh, where basically we can just draw some lines you know, uh, just by clicking on here, drawing some lines, and then uh, after a new line segment has been drawn, I will calculate all of the intersection points with any of the other lines. You can also see here that if uh, the lines happen to intersect 
not into the line segment, I've drawn sort of a grayed out one. So we can tell the difference between intersections that actually occur over a line segment and intersections that don't occur within that line segment. So again, just doing that secondary testing, does the intersection point actually occur on the line segment itself or is it outside on the infinite line? So to make this work, I've created this line class and the line class is actually fairly simplistic other than I've got some more sophisticated drawing uh, methods in there just to draw some of the dotted lines and you know some of the extra decorative stuff that makes us see what's actually going on there. Other than that, I've actually had to implement three sort of helper functions here that are gonna be useful. Uh, the slope function, which is gonna calculate the slope. Notice here, I'm just doing rise over run, difference in the Y coordinate over difference in the X coordinate. And the only test I'm doing here is making sure that I'm not dividing by zero. If I am dividing by zero, I return false. Of course, we uh, will end up dividing by zero in the edge case when we have a vertical line when our x coordinate is the same. And so in that case, uh, I actually haven't handled that case here and I get sort of a bizarre bug in my demo. Uh, and usually if you need to handle the vertical lines, you build in that edge case and actually uh, intersection with a vertical or horizontal line is a much simpler uh, task. I also use the method to find the y-intercept as we just described here, again with some edge case uh, detecting above there. And the inverse case is just using the formula uh, for x instead of y equals mx plus b, you get x equals y minus b over m. And since we're plugging in y equals zero here to get the x-intercept, the b is the y-intercept, so we get the minus b here divided by the m is the slope. That's just my x-intercept. So again, just a little bit of math, some edge case here, and then calculating what the x-intercept for my line is. Now, what I, what, now I've done this because it's going to be helpful for us to know these different values when we want to do the collision detection, which is what I really want to focus on now. So I'm going to look now here at the collision detection. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is check are our lines parallel? If they are parallel, there is no intersection point, so we have no need to go any further, and I will just return false. Otherwise, I'm going to calculate where this intersection point is going to be. So now what I want to do is take that algebra that we already did and do it for an arbitrary set of lines. So instead of having mx plus b, I'm going to have uh, ax plus b and cx plus d for my two different lines. And then I'm going to set them equal to each other so I can find the intersection point. Now, by doing it this way, uh, at least assuming that we have uh, normal values for A, B, C, and D, then we can compute what, where that intersection point is going to be arbitrarily. And then later, once we know what A, B, C, and D are, we can plug them in. That's what we need to do for our method, because for our method, these A, B, C, and D, we can treat them, at least for now, as being the inputs to the method. Okay, this will be the slope and the y-intercept for both of our lines. So let's do a little algebra. I'm going to move the C over to this side, so we're going to get A minus C times X. And then I'm going to bring the B to the other side, which is going to give me D minus B. And then I want my X. I'll divide out on this side. I'm going to get my D minus B. Let's throw that in brackets just so it matches what I'm going to write below here, which will be my A minus C. Remember, this math tells us the X coordinate of the intersection point. So we now know what X is. So using that math, of course, we had A's, B's, C's, and D's here. But we had the difference between D and B, which were the two y-intercepts. D was the other y-intercept. B was our, or this y-intercept. And then we had also the difference between the slopes, but the difference between the slopes are the other way. We have our slope minus the other slope. Now, if you recognize it, if you know a little bit of matrix algebra, you might recognize this and say, hey, this kind of looks like doing maybe some Gaussian elimination or something there. And indeed, that's exactly what we're doing here is some Gaussian elimination. 
Also, if you happen to know a little bit of matrix algebra, there happens to be a more elegant function or method that you can write where we just calculate the determinant of a matrix, check to see if it's zero and do a couple other things. And that is an easier way to do line intersection. But this version of line intersection happens to just be more intuitive if you understand the algebra behind just these normal lines, the, the, the y equals mx plus b equations for a line, which a lot of us picked up in our grade school. So if you do know that matrix algebra stuff, you might want to go look at a, a slightly more elegant implementation. Otherwise, this implementation works very well because we've just done that, that little bit of Gaussian elimination here, or we've just done that a little bit of algebra, if you think of it that way, to figure out what that x is. Then what we do, we take that x and I just plug it into my y equals m x plus b. This is the m, this is the b. I just plug the x in and that gives me the y. And then when I'm done, that's my y. Now let's take a closer look at my draw. All right, my draw is actually pretty extensive here. It's got a whole bunch going on so I can draw the, uh, the longer parts of the segment, the, the infinite line segments and so on. But I really only want to focus on the collision detection stuff. And this is again, if you've been following along in, in this series of videos, we've been doing a couple of these sort of, of narrow phase collision detections where we go to every other entity and we check to see if we've collided with them. In this particular demo, I've added an extra little bit of uh, a side checking here where, where I'm going to check for collision with entities in the entity list up to this entity up to the one I'm currently on, meaning I'm only checking with collision for entities prior to this entity in the entity list. That is the reason I've chosen to do that is to save myself from doing double checks. Sometimes doing double checks causes problems in your handling. Um, the most common version of this or bug that you might encounter in this case is when you do elastic collisions you swap velocities but if you do a double swap they just get their normal velocity back all of a sudden it looks like absolutely nothing's happening in your collision detection and handling because things just float between them between each other um, but it turns out they really are just doing this double swap which becomes a problem so i built this in here to stop myself from doing a double collision handling. I have two lines. When line A detects that they've collided with line B, I know that line B will not be also checking to see if they've collided with line A. In this particular demo, it doesn't matter because I'm just drawing a circle. I just didn't want to draw that circle twice because at least on the canvas that can draw it, draw it maybe a little bit stronger or if you draw over more than once you can get sort of a darker line and I didn't want that so I just wanted to draw it once. So that's what I've got here is just drawing the circle once and the only other test I've got here that's maybe important so I check to see where we collide and that gives me that point and then I take that point and I check to see if it's on the line segment. Let's just do a quick check at on line segment. You can see here, it's pretty straightforward. Is it between the two X coordinates? So as I mentioned, that's very straightforward. I just check if it's between those two X coordinates. If it is on both this line segment and on the other line segment, then I will color it red, my circle red, because that's an actual intersection. Otherwise, I color it gray, and then I just color uh, a circle around that point of intersection. So we can draw a line, and then when I draw another line here, again, it calculates that point of intersection, and then it draws a circle, a red circle around it. Let's draw a, a slightly different one here. We can see this one happens to be on the two line segments, so it gets red. This one is not. Uh, it's on one of the line segments, but not the other one, so it's gray. And then maybe one other try. Both of our intersection points here happen to be off the line segments and so are gray. Now notice this, this line here and this line probably intersect way up here in the corner somewhere. Well, those are off the line segments as well. So of course we can imagine them to be gray. All right, if you wanna play with my little line segment intersector as well, you can just check the, the links down below. Uh, I've got a link to the code and to a live version. And so you can test that out yourself. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna do some line and circle intersection in my next video. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video.